Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Joshua. We're going to be, these next probably two lessons, we're going to be looking in Joshua chapters 16 and 17. But before we begin our these lessons, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord is Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, in chapters 16 and 17, it's recorded the inheritance of the two sons of Joseph. Now, if you ask why Joseph's two sons come before all the other tribes that are left, that are left over to inherit land, it's because the, the order of priority among the tribes of Israel seem to start with the tribe of Judah first. And then came Joseph's tribes, Joseph's two sons second. You may say, well, what about Reuben and Simeon and those? Well, it just seems that if you study, it seems that Judah came first and then Joseph's come second. In First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 5, we're going to read verses 1 and 2 to help maybe explain a little bit. It just says, Now the sons of Reuben, the, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his what? His birthright was given unto who? The sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the genealogy is not to be re re reckoned after the birthright. All right. Now, verse 2 says, For Judah prevailed above his brother. That's is why Judah's first. And of him come the chief ruler. But the birthright was Joseph's. So Judah is first in pecking order. And then... Uh, comes Joseph's two sons, and then comes the rest of the tribes. Now, the birthright of Reuben was given to Joseph's sons because of his sin with sleeping with his father, with, with Jacob's wife. Now, we know that Judah was given the south land, but Ephraim and the half tribe of Manasseh were given the central part of the land of Canaan, the promised land. So Judah has the south, and then as you go north, then you have Ephraim and Manasseh in the middle part. Now the amount of land that just these three tribes took was about half of the promised land. Simeon was given a portion of land in the south of Judah's inheritance. And Benjamin had a very small portion of land in between Judah's land and Ephraim's land. So J Benjamin had like a sliver of land uh, right around the city of Jer uh, Jerusalem. If you get a map and you see the the different portions that these tribes had, you'll see where they are. Now, in verse in uh, chapter 17, verses 3 through 6, we have an interesting portion of scripture about the five daughters of Zelophehad. The five daughters of Zelophehad. And the rest of this lesson is gonna be is gonna be about these, these five daughters. Of Zelophehad. Now, in order to get a fuller understanding of what is happening here, we need to look at three portions of Scripture in the book of Numbers. All right. Now, let's, you know what, actually, let's read Joshua chapter 17, verses 3 through 6. And it says, But Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, uh, the son of Maker, the son of Manassas, he had no sons, but daughters, and these are the names of the daughters, Mela, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. 
And they came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes. And they said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brethren. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brethren of his father, of, of Manasseh. And there fell ten portions to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the, on the other side of Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons, on the re and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. Now, here they ask for the land, but we have to understand, we ha in order to get a better view of this, we have to go back to Numbers chapter 26, and we're going to read verse 33. So Numbers 26, verse 33 says, And Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters were of Zelophehad were, again, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. All right, so we got that established. Zelophehad had no sons. Now, now we go to Numbers 27, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. And it says here, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the family of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mela, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar, the priest, and before the princes, and all the congregations of the door, uh, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they said, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in company with them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. But he died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among the family? Because he has, because he has no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our family. And... <laughs> And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. Ah, Moses was stumped. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> he says, well, I'm going to have to go and pray. Because I don't know, this hasn't, this hasn't come up before. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, You know what? The daughters of Zelophehad, they speak right. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And you shall also speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man dies, and he has no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughters. Now, so, in Numbers 27, 1 through 8, the five daughters, they bring their request to Moses and to Eleazar and to the princes. And again, in verse 3, they say that their father had no part in the rebellion of Korah, but he died in his own sins. He was, their father was not rebellious toward God. Therefore, he should have a right to be given a portion of land in the promised land. And in verses 6 through 8, God supports their request and he allows them to have a portion of land in their father's name. Now we have to go to Numbers chapter 36. Numbers 36, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 12 in order to understand. Ready? And it says here, And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, they came near. Okay, so now we have the we have the children of Manasseh coming now to Moses. I, I believe it's yeah. Come, they come to Moses, and before the princes of the chief of their fathers of the children of Israel, and they said, 
the Lord commanded, my Lord, meaning God commanded Moses, to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of who? Of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And now here, here's the problem. Verses, verse 3 begins why, why they came to Moses. They have a concern. And, and this is their concern. And if they, meaning the five daughters of, of Zelophehad, if they are married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance, meaning the five daughters' inheritance, be put unto the inheritance of the tribe where they are received. That means their husband's tribe. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribes of, their fa of, of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph had said well. Ah, now, this is the thing which the Lord does command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, What? This is this. So now this is the result. They are afraid. The other, tri the other uh, families uh, of Manassas are afraid. That there, that the five daughters' land is going to eventually, if they marry outside of Manassas's family, uh, their that their land is going to be taken from them and given to this other tribe's family. So the result is this: this is the thing which the Lord does command concerning these daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry to whom they think best. All right, so they can marry whoever they think, but only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So they can only marry within their own tribe. They're not allowed to marry outside of their tribe. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe for everyone uh, of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the families of the tribes of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. So in verse 10, they obeyed what Moses said. For Melah, Tirzah, and Hagla, Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, they were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manassas, the sons of Joseph. And their inheritance remained in the tribe, uh, in the tribe of the family of their fathers. So now in these verses, again, this a concern rises up from the children of Manassas concerning the inheritance of these five daughters. And again, in verses one and two of Numbers 36, we have the promise of the inheritance. Now, the Manassites are approaching the giving of the portion of the land to each tribe from the standpoint that that, that land should remain in the tribe forever. Just because when, when they gave them that portion, when, when that portion of land was given to that tribe, they believed that it would be their land forever. It wasn't, it wasn't like when they were on the other side of the Jordan River and they're getting ready to go over. You know, like, you know, you know here's this tribe and, and this, this, this father from this tribe 
is going to have a portion of land up in the north. And from the same tribe, this father is going to have a, a portion of land in the south. And this one's going to be on the east side. No, they were given a portion of land. And you were in that portion of land was belonged to that tribe. And they believed it was forever. Each tribe was to have a marked out territory. It was not to be, the tribes were not to be spread out among themselves throughout the whole land. You know, a family here, a family there. No, it wasn't to be that way. They were to given, be given a portion of land and that was their land. Now in verses three and four of Numbers 36, we see the issue was being raised that they do not want part of their land to become another, belong to another tribe. And they were afraid that if these, you know, these five daughters started marrying, you know, two of the daughters married from Ju uh, uh, Judah's tribe and two, the other two daughters went up north and maybe married somebody from Asher or Issachar or whatever, that their land would become part of other, another tribe's land. And then in verses five through nine, Therefore, a new law was made by God that any daughters who inherited land must marry men only from their own tribe, which would prevent the land from going unto another tribe. And then in verses 10 through 12, the result was that these daughters, they did obey they did obey God's word and they married within their tribe and it stayed within. And so when we see here in Joshua chapter 17, uh, verses three through six, that these daughters of Zelophehad, they inherited the land. There's a little more to it. We have to kind of understand that, that there's a little more to this than what meets the eye. You have to go back to numbers in order to uh, have a fuller understanding of it. All right, we're going to continue on in chapter 17. We're going to be starting in verse 12 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.